Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Inoue Manabu. It's an honor for me to have a presentation in this significant event and training. Today, I will be talking about an overview of ICH-E2B-R3 and Japanese implementation. Today's presentation is based upon my personal opinion. It does not represent any official position of ICH or Japanese pharmaceutical industries. Now, before I begin, let me briefly introduce myself to you. I work for MSD and I work as ICH E2B R3 project leader. I have been participating in this task force team since 2003. At the same time, I work as E2B R3 implementation project lead from industry for PDMA. This is the table of contents for today's talk. First, I will um, be talking about the overview of ICHE to be R3 guideline, followed by implementation of ICHE to be R3 in Japan. E to be R3 belongs to RCHE topics, which talks about efficacy. And among them, topics starting with E2 is relevant to pharmacovigilance. Currently, there are E2A to E2, or through E2F, E2A, E2B, and E2D. Three of them are related to safety data. This slide is from ICH website. This is specifically about E2BR3. As you can see from the uh, slide, it talks about the implementation status by each country. For example, Korea and Japan are highlighted and the implementation status are explained. Now let's take a look at the history of ICHE2B. The first uh, talk started back in 1997. After that, in November 2003, regarding E2B topic, there was a revision. So it was the first time the revision started, and this uh, has led to the current E2B R3. R represents revision, and the number means how many revisions have been made. So when we say E2B R3, it means uh, regarding E2B topic, there were three revisions. E2B R3 discussion started in 2003, and the final um, agreement reached in 2012 after minor changes in documents. Currently, November 2016 version is used. This is the current version. Ever since the review started until final agreement, it took nine years. Why did it take so long? One of the reasons for that is SDO process implementation in 2006. In case of the first E2B, the specifications were developed internally in ICH, but for R3, the technological specification was not developed internally by ICH. Instead, the development was outsourced to the third party. As a result, standards development organizations process was introduced in ISO HL7 and SEM collaboration 
was the basis for a specific developing specifications for R3. ISO and others participated in the specifications. So from ICHE to be R3, how to apply the standard and specifications, the further discussion was required. In R E to be R3 project, ICH implementation guide was developed. This is the implementation guide package of ICH E2B R3. Not only the implementation guide, ISO specifications are quite complicated. So there um, are other documents uh, written to complement the standard. So multiple documents were released at the same time. This is also a published document list. A lot of documents were released at the same time when implementation guide package was released. So far, I talked about brief history of E2B R3. From um, starting the review until the final agreement, it took nine years. Now, let me talk about the contents of E2B R3. This table is E2B R3 relational diagram. As you can see from the bottom, at the top, it's one to many, one to one, one to zero, or one to many or one to zero or one to many at the uh, right corner of the screen. The black dot represents mandatory. The white uh, dot represents non-mandatory items. For example, a patient's information in E2B R3, there must be a single patient, so it's one to one. And this one is the contents of AE. So this is mandatory, and at the same time, there could be multiple adverse effects. So it's one to many. Likewise, in the case of drug information, it's one to many. This is ICH E2B R3's first item, C1. This is for the management. For example, case ID, case type, whether it's voluntary report or test uh, report, you can choose. And the date the uh, information it was received first, and the date the final information is received. At the bottom, zero to many. Uh, other data such as ECG and X-ray data, if there are additional information, you could put them um, and repeat as necessary. For electronic files, you can put it in R3 XML file. Next, C2, primary source. For actual AE case, uh, here the reporter's information is given, medical staff or a customer information and other personal information is can be found here. Depending on the regulation in different countries, the scope of the personal information to be shared will be determined. Next, C3. It's an information about the sender of it to be uh, data. For example, when the pharmaceutical company is reporting to the regulatory agency, sender becomes the company. Next, C4, it's literature references. 
when um, the source is the literature for AE, the literature reference is given here. As is the case with the previous items regarding literature reference, PDF and electronic files can be attached. Next, C5, study identification. For example, the first uh, field talks about study name, sponsor, study number, and study type. And for zero to many, repeat as necessary. For global study, each regulatory agency gives a unique number or country number uh, can be entered here. And it could be repeated as necessary. From now on, the main contents of AE information, item D, patient characteristics. First box at the top is patient initial, age, weight, and gender information. At the bottom, there are multiple entries such as patient's actual um, disease name or medical history in case of death cause of death uh, are entered and repeated as necessary. Next, D10 is for parent information. Among AE, sometimes there are cases that medication from mother gets uh, delivered to fetus and AE is expressed um, in fetus. In this case, patient is either newborn or fetus, but the medication was given to mother or parents. So in um, this uh, D10 box, you could enter parent information. Next, E, um, adverse event. As you can see from the screen and as I explained before, it's one too many. Various information can be entered here, starting with E1. Reaction and event as reported in native language. EI1112A uh, is written in native language. So if the initial uh, reporting was done in Korean, the Korean is entered. And the English translation is entered in EI 1.2. And when the MEDRA coding is done, the MEDRA code is entered in EI 2.1B. The seriousness uh, by each AE is entered EI um, 3.2A. Death and other critical information will be entered. The date of start of our, uh, AE and duration can be also entered here. Next, F. Results of tests and procedures relevant to the investigation of the patient. For each AE, um, sometimes uh, there is no one-to-one -one, um, result, so it's zero to many. Test date, test name, and the MEDRA code of test name, test result, normal low value and normal high value are entered. So this is what um, goes into F. Next, G, drug information. It's quite complicated. At the very top, the actual drug information is entered. Drug name, 
is in here. And then for repeat as necessary, this is a section for drug substances. For drug product, there could be a single substance or multiple substances. So this box is zero to many and repeat as necessary. Next, GK4R talks about dosage information. It could be a single entry or there could be difference in dosage, whether increasing or decreasing the uh, administered dosage. So for a single drug product, there could be multiple dosage information. That is why it's zero to many, and that is why it's in the box repeat as necessary. Next, GK7R, it's indication section. For a single drug product, usually there is a single indication, but sometimes for one drug product, there could be multiple indications. That's why it's zero to many. And one of the E2BR3 characteristics is shown in G, uh, K9I, drug reaction event matrix. Multiple drug products and multiple AEs are entered in this section. For example, time interval between beginning of the drug administration and start of reaction. It, in the bottom of the screen, it also talks about assessment of relatedness of drug to reaction. The causal um, um, relationship can be multiple, so uh, you can uh, repeat this section as necessary. Next, A. The final item of E2B R3. This is a case summary. In this E2B R3, under case summary, there is a section for native language. Case summary and reporter's comments can be entered in the native language. And it could be repeated as necessary. For one case, multiple language input can be found in this section. So far, I talked about the items of E2BR3. Now, let's talk about terminologies used in E2BR3. First, ISO uh, specification, IDMP, usually for drug product information. In case of IDMP, uh, it's partially implemented. However, it's not fully implemented yet. That is the current status. Next, METRA, which you are very familiar with. AE information, disease name, and uh, diagnostic uh, information and data are coded using METRA. Next. Terminologies of E2BR3 uh, is defined in ICH. For that purpose, ICH maintained code set is used. Next, international standard code sets, national codes, and other important data could be used here. So this is a base standard code set. Last but not least, nerve flavor. So there are five code sets used in E2B R3. This slide talks about IDMP. In case of IDMP, there are five standards. 
ISO 11238 is for substances. 11239, it's rather long. It's PHPID specification. 11240 is about units of measurement. 11615 is identification of medicinal product, drug product name and MH information is here. Lastly, 11616 is for identification of regulated pharmaceutical product information. For IDMP, these five specifications um, are used, and these five uh, specifications are called as IDMP as a whole. For IDMP, within E2BR3, uh, there are uh, sections for IDMP. But depending on country, the level of implementation varies. So there is this notice for several IDMPs at ICH website. The implementation status is uh, open to the public. So please visit this URL to check the details. Next, information about METRA. METRA, you already know quite well. Through ICH topic, it was uh, developed, and M1 is the METRA's topic section. METRA uh, is maintained by Maintenance and Support Service Organization, MSSO, and there are a uh, re release uh, in each March and September every year. Medra talks about AE, disease name, and test data. So it's the scope of Medra. Recently, the error information of drug device combination products uh, are included. And Medra is translated into multiple different languages. Medra has eight digit code and currency flag. And according to E2BR3 definition, when Medra is used inside E2BR3, lowest level term LLT code uh, are you, is used for E2BR3 message. Please refer to the implementation guide. And for a single ICH ICSR, there is only one version of METRA. Next, ICH maintained code sets for E2BR3. There are a lot of numbers. So this is how much um, it's required for E2BR3. This is internally uh, reviewed and published information. Next, international standard code sets. As explained before, there is a national code, ISO 3166. It's being used in E2BR3 and unit. UCOM, the unified code for units of measure is used in um, E2BR3, and there is a definition for UCOM. More details can be found um, in the link at the bottom of the screen. Those who are interested, please visit uh, this URL to learn more about UCOM. Next, null flavor. E2BR3's message is based upon HL7 message. 
and no flavor definition in HL7 specifically is for uh, being not clear. But in case of being not clear, there could be different uh, categories. For example, uh, inquiry was uh, uh, sent to the reporter, but it's not um, it's not clear, or there was no inquiry. So depending on the case, uh, you could select the appropriate case. And other than that, there are associated documents, which include uh, E2B R3 questions and answers. ICH E2B members review this document and publish it. And implementing R3, the implementation guide may not be sufficient to provide all the details. So the user's questions are collected and the answers to those questions are shared. And second associated document is ICHM2 recommendation. ICHM2 is about the electronification of all the documents. So here, in an electronic way, what kind of the technologies should be adopted in order to transfer uh, the document in an electronic manner? So the recommendations to materialize it is provided. And OID, UUID, they are the IDs used for code list. And when those IDs are used, how to use them are shared in the information paper. So that was the outline of the E2BR3. So from now on, I will talk about the Japanese implementation of E2BR3. This slide shows the history of implementation of ICH E2A, E2B, and E2D in Japan. In 2003, October, from that timeline, E2B R2, the previous version of the uh, E2B R3, was implemented. And as I said, in 2003, E2B R3 was started to be reviewed at ICH. And for R2, from October 2003, the acceptance was allowed and the report using R2 was completed and finished in March 2019. And that's because the, the, the reporting, the acceptance of the R3 was started at that time. And R3 was started to be accepted April 1st in 2016. And before the 1st of April 2019, R2 and R3, both formats were accepted. So the transition from R2 to R3 took about three years. And E2B R3 report is already mandatory now in Japan. So let me focus more specifically on E2B R3 implementation, which was started in 1st of April 2016. This is what kind of the preparations were done before that. In 2012, E2B R3 Step 4 was initiated at ICH. So in Japan, the working group was established in, in order to implement R3. And this working group includes members from MHLW and PMDA and also the industry associations. So representatives from the industry include system vendors, and they 
closely cooperated in exchanging information so that the industry can be well prepared for the introduction of the R3. So the working group was established in 2012, and the preparation for R3 implementation was started in earnest, and the pilot testing was done afterwards. And in order to receive and accept it to be R3 report, the PMDA started its own work, and it took about four years to adjust the system for acceptance R3 report. And starting from 1st of April 2016, the R3 acceptance was started. So there was a three years transition time afterwards. And E2B R3 became a mandatory from 2019, um, April 1st. Shifting from E2B R2 to E2B R3 uh, required a review group. And as I said, uh, that group communicated on the issues on this slide. Because E2B R2 started in 2003, it was really important to discuss what to do in order to have a very smooth transition from E2B R2 to R3. Particularly, the data need to be in the electronic format and that is uh, quite complicated, so it involved or it induced a large scale pilot test. And for the implementation in Japan, the regional guidance QA was also discussed and created by this group. And from the company side, to implement E2BR3, they need to have a sufficient environment. So there, that requires the establishment of testing environment beforehand. And next is the ICH implementation guide and the relationship between the regional IG of Japan. Here, ICH E2B R3 implementation guide is the main document. However, in order to implement that guideline in Japan, regional IG provides some more details. The reporting is transited from E2B R2 to E2B R3, and there are some reporting rules and the things to be considered. And from the regional OID perspective, this is a unique item for Japan. So the list relevant to regional OID is also included in regional IG. And data mandatory data field are also set in this uh, IG. And also for E2B R3, basically the report is done in electronically, but sometimes some sponsors need to uh, report it in a paper format. So when the report is in the paper format, what kind of the format need to be utilized? Those things are described in regional IG. Next one is that during the transition process from R2 to R3, there are some rules. For example, the first report is R2, but the following report can be done in R3. However, once you switch from R2 to R3, then the following reports cannot be done in R2 format. This is the rule decided by PMDA. And when the electronic reporting is done, there are some technical rules to be uh, complied with. 
for electronic reporting or the electronic submission, EDI or AS1 or AS2 need to be followed. And the PMDA's website or the reception uh, site can be used to upload file. And for E2B file, there are the maximum cap of the size of file for AS1, 10 mega, AS2, 50 mega. If the file is uploaded on website, for one ICSR, 100 mega is allowed. For digital signature or the certification, there is a rule on that. In accordance with the Japanese law, the representative of the company need to report or submit the report to the PMDA. And in the process, that representative's electronic certification or the signature need to be attached. And if the electronic submission utilizing EDI is not feasible, then CD-ROM or DVD can be used as submission media. And when the submission is made, the E2V file name and the naming rule is described in this technical rules. And there are some additional information. As mentioned before, when submission is made to the PMDA, there is a data check logic and error codes. And if the companies do not have a large number of submissions or the company is not that large, then the free tools are uh, provided by PMDA. And also, the company representative's electronic certification or the digital signature need to be used, and that is encrypted. So this kind of a tool is being prepared at this moment by PMDA. This is the data check logic, some part of it. I am very sorry that the tables are written in Japanese, but left side is error code and in the middle data check logic again the data check logic left side e2b r3 item number and here on the right side you can see round shape it means mandatory item. X means no entry. A, A, D, A. You can see those uh, letters. The, the column starting with A means the data check for the commercial uh, products. And D, A, the letter starts with D, is the data check for the clinicals. So there are some mandatory entries and non-mandatory entries. Here, I show some free tools and the testing environment provided by PMDA. The first one is tools. There are two tools. One is ICSR creation tool. By utilizing this tool, E2B R3 file to be submitted to the PMDA can be created. Second tool is encryption tool. The content need to be encrypted into XML file utilizing electronic uh, signature or the certificate. So these two tools are provided free for use. And for environment, the environment here is testing environment. Companies want to test the E2B R3 environment 
So in order to val uh, validate and verify that uh, environment, the testing environment is needed. So this testing environment was established from the the start of the E2BR3 acceptance, and currently uh, this testing environment is widely utilized by many companies in Japan. This is E2BR3 creation tool provided by PMDA. The red box shows the regional data element, which is unique to Japan. And below that, you can see blue box. This is ICH items. So we have both J element or the Japan unique items and the ICH items. This creation tool can allow, will allow us to enter all those elements. And there is a preview. In a paper format, the entries can be verified. And down below, you can see error check button. If you click on this button, PMDA's data check logic will run so that you can see if there is any entry error. So this tool can be basically used by small and medium-sized companies. However, even for the com big companies can utilize these tools as a substitute system or the backup system when they have a big issues like the down uh, of the uh, AE uh, reporting system. And the second tool is encryption tool. So here, the generated file can be called in, and then the file is encrypted. Here, electronic certificate is used. PMDA provides acknowledgement file, and this is encrypted. And here, that file can be decrypted using this tool. and ICSR reception site of PMDA. As you can see on the screen, encrypted files using the before mentioned tools, those files are uploaded to this website so that you can make the submission or you can see the reporting status the reports submitted by other companies. The here, the submissions made through the gateway and also the submissions using EDI tools, all those submissions or the reports can be checked and confirmed. And this is how you can utilize PMDA free tools so that you can make a submission at a low cost. You can utilize creation tool to create file and then using the encryption tool you can encrypt the file then after that PMDA's gateway or the uh, reception website is the place where you make the submission so you can make E2BR3 electronic submission to PMDA at a low cost this is PMDA's guidebook for E2B R3. We call this guidebook as green book because as you can see the cover is green. So the green book is written by the representatives from the industry and uh, the old stakeholders in the government and the industry are referring to this book. And if you look at the green book, basically implementation guide from ICH are described and also 
the J element or the Japan specific items are also included. And regional IG, the discussion or the points from regional IG are also included. So ICH guideline, regional guideline, both of them are integrated into this green book so that you can see every detail for R3. This is the structure of green book. Here, the blue box, you can see ICH E2B R3 implementation guide. This is translated into Japanese. And then you see here the yellow area. This shows business rule. It basically follows the ICH. But at the same time, if there is anything that to be cared about more in Japan, that is also described. And here the yellow table shows whether this is the mandatory or not mandatory items. And this part is taken from the regional guideline. And here again, what regional guideline says is taken here again because this should be followed as a rule to make a submission in Japan. The green part, the Q&A are also shared. For example, the patient initial, ICH guideline or regional guideline, the Q&A or FAQ relevant to this question are shared in this box. So I will be shifting gear a little bit to another topic. Usually, big pharmas run the global AE systems. When I say global AE system, it means it has the single global database. So database itself is one, single. So when they have AE, the AE need to be entered into this single global database. And based on that DB, the global big pharmas make submission or the report to the different regulatory agencies in different regions. But as you can see from the slide, depending on the agencies, some agencies are still on R2. So the entry was made as a single unit, but here PMDA R3, MFDS R3, FDA R2. So each different countries have different requirements and therefore the report need to satisfy those different requirements. So it can be an issue, particularly for this part here. We need to have a very deep understanding about E2B because agencies may require R2 and other agencies may require R3. So based on the single global database, what kind of the data need to be entered and based on what logic the output will be produced in R2 format or R3 format? We need to understand that. And second, the local requirements from the agencies are different. So we need to understand those local requirements and that need to be reflected into the global database. Otherwise, the local requirements may not be followed in the report. So the local agency's requirement need to be clearly understood. And here I have an example. This is the lab test result. I compare E2B R3 and R2. For example, here, for R2, there is only one field for test result. However, for R3, there are three different fields for test result. One is code and the other one is value. 
And third is text. You can enter text into the test result field. But for R2, there is only one field for test result. And therefore, you can enter number and text, both of them. So in database, which field will be uploaded and how you enter the data in the field is very important to have the appropriate R2 or R3 output. So this will end uh, my presentation. I really hope that uh, my presentation helped you to better understand E2B R3 guideline from ICH. Thank you for your attention.